Hello and welcome to yet another dope edition of VIP Access. Today we're coming to you from the brand new Wakanda Club in Westland. So you need to find out where Wakanda is located. And I'm speaking to Fully Focus. Many of you know him as DJ Fully Focus, but actually you'll get to know that he's an all-rounded entertainer and businessman who's actually traversing the globe and working in the music industry. Hello Fully Focus. How are you doing, Aniko? How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? You look lovely. Thank you. You look good too. It's actually so good that you're in Kenya for some time because I know you live in America and I'm not sure where you live because every time you're kind of on tour and um, traveling. So tell me about your time in Kenya. You've been here since when? What have you been up to? I'm based in Atlanta, uh, though, like you said, I tour a lot. And like this past summer, well, let me say last year's summer, I also spent majority of my time in Las Vegas where um, I had a residency there. Uh, but yeah, I came uh, this, uh, I think it was back in November when I came because one of my events that I do out there in the States called Passport Experience, uh, we're working on doing it here in, uh, in Nairobi. Yes. So for those who don't know about the Passport Experience, it's actually quite an experience. It's a big festival that was founded by uh, Fully Focus here and his partners, Akon and um, Chaka Zulu. I hope I've said that well. Chaka, not Chaka. So, Shaka Chaka Zulu, potato, potato. So, you know, tell us about bringing the passport experience to Kenya because there's already an activation that happened. So the idea of Passport Experience when I started it three years ago was really about bridging different cultures through music. Um, I used to go to a lot of different festivals and I would find it was either an EDM festival, a reggae festival, or hip hop. And I was like, look, I, I like a little bit of everything. So why not put all genres and cultures together on one stage and especially represent Africa? So I did it, it became you know, good, successful. Then by the following year, um, a friend of mine, Akon, happened, you know, we became, he became a, a business partner in it, as well as Shaka Zulu. Shaka Zulu basically is the man behind everything rap and actor uh, Ludacris has done, you know, from the movies to the music and everything. So we did it and then we moved it around in different markets. We did New York, uh, Los Angeles, uh, South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. Um, and then I did it recently in uh, Las Vegas. And now I've been wanting obviously to bring it home because you know this is where I'm from. And so what we did is we did a small little activation of it. I did a small little activation of it where I did a hangar party at Wilson Airport. You know, because when you think passport, you think airport. So I actually did it in an in a airport hangar, which is you know pretty interesting uh, and everything. And that was just the beginning. So now we'll do um, a couple more things now going into this year. Yeah. I remember the first time we kind of communicated um, was when you booked Saudi so for their first gig in America and they were coming to play at the seventh and it was actually I think like a Valentine's thing and um, that's when I started checking you out and wondering like this is more than just a DJ because from the very beginning I thought you just DJ you know but I guess you also kind of do bookings and promotions so tell me about that you know but with Saudi Soul, it wasn't just a, a Vegas thing. I actually also did their first U.S. tour, the whole tour. And I've worked with a lot of artists over the years and bringing them over there. Like actually, even WizKid, his first gig in the U.S., I'm not who did it, even putting him on mainstream radio, and a lot of, a lot of African artists um, over the years. So it's one thing I've always done. Of course, even especially Kenyan artists over the years, it just kind of helped progress. And what it is is um, I just built a lot of relationships over time and experience, understanding what it takes to be able to book a talent secure talent and deliver so over time people would ask me hey can I get this artist can I get that artist and so because I had the relationships and the expertise I would help people uh, book artists um, through my booking agency fully focused agency um, and actually even here locally too I was able to bring some artists whether it's uh, Blackstreet and SWV um, even Whiskey himself and a few other artists here and there so yeah it's been it just kind of happened naturally obviously because of being in the scene and building relationships over years you're also very close to Major Lazer and you've worked with them on a couple of uh, projects, especially when it comes to highlighting dope African songs and doing um, remixes of African songs. And this is something you've been passionate about and you do it yourself also. Last year, um, I remember he did a, a huge remix of uh, the Lamba Lolo uh, song and that was even before it had really blown up in Kenya. So how do you know this is a song that I should pick up and do a remix of because you did that before it had completely blown up and um, how did the relationship with Major Lazer begin? Well the relationship with Major Lazer actually started back in 2010 that's when I met uh, Walshy, Walshy Fire, big up to Walsh and uh, um, I started booking him for my events 
Um, and by the time he was joining Major Lazer, that relationship continued. So then in 2013, um, I was managing Tamaya and I took him to Trinidad to perform for this guy called Marshall Montano, who's like a big soca artist. Uh, I had just put Tamaya together with Sean Paul for the Bam Bam remix, and then Marshall wanted to jump on it. So next thing you know, we take, we're going to Trinidad, and, and in Trinidad, there was this big event that this guy Marshall was doing, and it was featuring uh, Major Lazer, Boys to Men, Tamaya, it was a whole bunch of people. So that's when I met Diplo through, now when I was already in Trinidad, well, she introduced me to Diplo in 2013, and we just built a relationship and started working. So a year later is when we put together um, the uh, Africa is the Future mixtape. I pretty much mixed, you know, and produced the whole thing, and then obviously we co-branded it and everything, and then a few years later we did the Africa Now mixtape, which were really the first um, Afrobeat mixtapes on a on a US platform, like a, a mainstream uh, platform. So that was really good. It, it opened a lot of people's um, eyes and ears to what was going on with the new sound of Africa. Um, in terms of music and, 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 and uh, remixes and everything, one thing I've always felt is that I don't think you need to convince people a song is a hit. They feel it, you know, because all you know, hit songs have the same elements. Usually, it's about the beat, the melody, and so and and whatever they're talking about is that. And that's what I constantly look for. And when I see something, I feel so it it, it has that vibe. Then yes, I'll get behind it and do what I can to help push it. So I've never been like oh waiting for something to get hot. Just like the relationships, whether it's like I said with the Walsh or Wiz, all these people, I look at. Um, potential and then invest in it um, whether it's people or projects uh, funny enough even with Akon going back a little bit um, my relationship with him started when I first started doing music in 2003 I entered when I was on college radio I did it myself uh, so I, I interviewed him on this college radio show while his single locked up had just started and that's how kind of the relationship built and everything so um, I don't know it's just one of those things I've always and, and I think that's how you know, it should be that you look at the potential of people, not when they've arrived, not when something is hot, that's when you're jumping. It's too late then. So you look at something and you trust your instinct in believing that this could be something great because it gives you that feeling, you know, and, you know, from then on, you add your flavor to it and keep it moving. Thank you so much and congratulations. So I've never really been to America yet, uh, but I hear a lot of stories that um, it's tough and, you know, it's, it's, it's a jungle out there and there's a whole lot of uh, professionals. It's not like other markets where you find maybe there's a scarcity of professionals in a certain industry. So I'm wondering, how does a Kenyan, how does an African, you know, build such a brand and, you know, be consistent for more than 15 years in the game and become one of the most respected DJs and entertainers in a very much non-African um, market? So how, how do you manage that? It's kind of a lot. I think it was early on when I realized, when I first started uh, doing my thing, that I realized quickly that um, it really doesn't matter where you come from as long as you represent excellence. If, you, if you're the best, if you just decide, I'm just going to be the best at what I do, people notice. You know, people notice when you just handle your business and do things above and beyond. I never, I, I couldn't lock myself down in thinking, oh, this is good for Kenya. No, I wanted to be global. I wanted to be big in the world. So I wanted to make sure, okay, if I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do, I have to maintain those international standards. So whether it's your American, European, Latin, Caribbean friend can come to my event or listen to you know my work and be just as impressed. So it was really more of a decision to commitment to excellence and not taking any shortcuts and playing by that. And over time, some people thought, oh, you, you know, you're arrogant because you think you know it's so high but you know the truth is you do have to be full of yourself to play on that level because you have to believe in yourself so much beyond your current circumstances believing that I'm gonna get here I know I don't look like it right now but I'm gonna get here so don't listen too much to you know anyone telling you oh no just bring it down so it was really more of a, a decision to uh, stick to excellence and then as a result anything I was going to do I was a part of naturally was attached to the uh, brand of excellence and it just opened certain doors left right and center since you came um to kenya you've you know many professionals who are not based in kenya and who are kenyans or who are africans when they come to uh, back to africa over the holidays you know they just take a holiday and they're sleeping and they're like now i'm in the motherland but since you came like you've been hustling you know you've had a couple of dj gigs you had the kind of uh 
passport experience thing at the airport and what else have you done? You played in Mombasa, you played in Rwanda. So I'm just wondering, um, did you come and say I'm here and all the promoters were hitting you up or had you already planned this prior and how do you get to do this? Because there's so many um, even East African DJs who we're not doing as much during this period. So tell us the secrets. I think uh, I think that it's important for anyone who's working on their career, trying to get to the next level. Like, it's far from arriving. Like, there's no arriving. So you have to keep working. Um, and you have to keep grinding, grinding. I, I really cannot tell you the last time I had a vacation. Uh, and, and again, the beauty about when you're doing what you love, you don't feel like it's work. You know, you get to enjoy it. And it's a blessing to be able to play music to entertain people. Um, so, you know, I love it I love, and I love traveling, like you said, whether it's Rwanda, Ghana, I just played in Ghana as well as Mombasa. So it's one of those things where um, I'd rather be playing music for people than being asleep, you know, at, at, uh, on, on any given night. Um, but like I said, it's also understanding that this thing is, this thing is nonstop. This thing is, is endless. I'll tell you this, and, you know, when you, when, spending time with, with some of the biggest entertainers in the world, whether it's Diplo or Akon and everything, when when I've spent enough time hanging uh, hanging around them, these people are working nonstop. Oh, yeah. they, now here's the thing, and and what clicked in my head is these people are already established. They've already cemented their place in entertainment, in history, and everything. They don't need to keep doing this. Why are they doing it? And once I started getting curious, I was like, wait, we we really relax a lot. You know, uh, we really just take things a little too easy. And understand that if you want to play on that level, then you have to grind like that. You know, you have to do that and everything. So so thank you so much, DJ Fully Focus, for the interview. I've actually learned a lot. I hope somebody watching um, has got to know more about you because we usually don't see the DJs talking. We just see you guys working. And uh, it's the first time we're actually having a proper conversation. So thank you so much. So guys, we're signing out, me and Fully Focus at VAP Access. And next week, I'm going to be hanging out with yet another celebrity. And as you wait for that, please subscribe to my YouTube and keep focused.